I'm here on the Barons Court Estate, one of the jewels in the county Tyrone, and there are many stories associated with that wonderful county. One in particular, the story of a certain Henry O'Neill. And here to tell me the story is Brendan Gormley, a, a local historian and a very fine storyteller. How you doing, Declan? Not too bad, Brendan. Henry O'Neill would be better known to most people as Harry Avery. And Harry Avery was tarnished to the O'Neill family, mm -hmm. which would be heir to the throne, yeah. pretty much. And he lived in a grand castle on the side of the River Struel, or the River Morn, where the two rivers meet. So Harry Avery and his new wife were enjoying their honeymoon when there came a knock on the castle door late at night and there was an old woman at the door begging alms. The young wife, miffed at being disturbed, particularly on her honeymoon, gave short shift to the woman and called her all sorts of names and chased her from the door, shouting, I would rather have a beast about the house than the likes of you. And the old woman turned on her heel with a scowl and said, you will get your wish and way off down the road. Now, a child was begotten to the happily married couple and after nine months, the curse came true and a child was born with the face of a pig. The family did everything in their power to hide her and she was kept in the house. She was raised as a daughter should be, taught all the things a girl of a noble family should be taught. But she grew up and in her turn, she was expected to marry. And being of high rank in a noble family, a suitable arrangement had to be made. <clears throat> Invitations were made to all the young men of proper rank. Mm -hmm. They all came, took a look at the daughter and turned around just as fast. They resorted to bribery. Of course, a young man attracted by the money, when he saw the young woman, bolted. And Harry Avery, of course, sent his soldiers and retainers after him, brought him back, and at the point of a sword, were going to force him to marry the young girl. It was that or be hung. And he says, no, you've got to give me another way out. I need, you need to give me another option. That is just plain trickery. So Harry Avery thought for a wee moment and says, right, build me a house on top of that mountain before morning and I'll let you off. <laughs> and he kicked him out the door and the man climbed the mountain and he sat on top of the mountain and he looked round him and he thought, how on earth am I going to build a house up here? And he sat there blubbering and wailing and as the night went on, there came a shout from behind a big stone, will you ever shut up that caterwauling? And uh, Tooks back, looks round him, and a man comes out from behind the stone. And he says, this is our mountain, what are you doing up here? He says, who are you? He says, I'm the king of the fairies. Oh, of course. Of course, who else would live behind a stone on top of a mountain? He says, this is our mountain. He says, well, I'm in a terrible fix, and he's blubbering and gurning. And he says, well, shut up your gurning and tell me what the problem is, he says. I've got to build a house on top of the hill before morning. He says, this is our hill. You can't build a house on it. And he just bawls again. He says, all right, shut up. We'll build you your house if you shut up. But you must do one thing for me. Come the morning and you've fulfilled your oath to the king. I want you to kick out the keystone over the main arch and the house will fall. So come the morning, Harry Avery and his retinue come up the hill and on top of the hill there's a fine looking house and of course he's in other words yes, gobsmacked, gobsmacked rightly gobsmacked and uh, the young man goes to Harry he says is, is my word kept am I all right he says yes you can go somewhat dis he was a bit miffed being oh, done, done out of a son-in-law <laughs> So the young man takes a flying kick, hits the keystone over the main arch, and the house falls down, and Harry Avery is doubly miffed. And he is so fed up with the whole story, he puts his daughter in a barrel, and he kicks the barrel down the hill. And for that action, he earned the name Uncouth, and Avery is the Irish word for uncouth. 
And that's how Harry Avery got his name. And that's a true story. Of all the wonderful stories from the County of Tyrone, perhaps the strangest of all is the story of the lost piper of Castle Derg. A castle is first mentioned in the 15th century in the annals of the Four Masters. And prior to that, the O'Donnells had a castle here, sacked by the O'Neills. And during the plantation of the 17th century, it was rebuilt by Sir John Davis. But ask any of the locals in the town, and they'll tell you not of the sack and the conquest of the castle. They'll tell you about the lost piper. The lost piper who disappeared into a vortex in the river Derg and was never seen again. There was, reputedly, a tunnel which led from the castle underground into the river Derg. And this was used to evade capture if the castle was under attack. One night, apparently, a lone piper in high spirits left the castle and disappeared into the tunnel, still playing his music so that his friends would know where he was. He played on and on, and the music faded and stopped, and the piper disappeared. And it is said that the tunnel collapsed and he was swept into the river Derg to disappear forever. From that day to this, that spot is known as the Castle Hole. We don't know the paper's name, but his legend lives on. Even today, there are some locals who will tell you that if you come down to this river early in the morning as the mist is rising, and you listen very, very carefully, you just might hear the plaintive sounds of the lost paper of Castle Derg. Outside the town of Dunamana, that an old castle was built in 1860, Alsna Cree Castle, the hill of my heart. It was built by a man called Sir William Ogilby, who some say was a good friend of Charles Darwin. He was a scientist and he was married twice. His first wife died young. He married again a lady named Adeline. They had two sons and four daughters, and it is one of the sons that is the, the interest in this story. He was a clever young fellow, and like his father, he studied zoology in Trinity College, Dublin. Story has it that he was going to Derry one day in his horse and carriage, and he met this young girl, Mary Jane Jemison. She was carrying a, a bunch of shirts. He trotted alongside her and asked her to come into the carriage, and she said, no. But they got chatting and she eventually accepted his offer of a lift. And by the time they reached Derry, they had fallen in love. They began to meet in secret and they hid little notes for each other in an old tree. And meanwhile, Ogilby's mother organised soirees and balls and dances to attract suitors for her children. And when they heard about his intentions with Mary Jane, they chased him abroad to study zoology far away from temptation. Mary was distraught. She dressed in black and walked the, the highways and byways according to legend. Until years later, she was walking past the tree where they left the notes and she looked in and there she found a note written by James. And she turned and there behind her was young James. He had returned. 
This time they were determined to marry and they were to go to Belfast against Ogilvy's parents' wishes. They relented and said they could get married provided they got married in Mary Jane's church. They did. They married an Earl's gift outside Donamana. They subsequently left the area and went far away to Australia, where Mary died nine years later. Alton Cree, the Hill of the Heart. <laughs>